So what we'll do now is carry out a similar analysis for space-time. So the scenario is we'll have Anastasia and Beowulf, um, each with a reference frame, and they'll have a clock at the origin and can imagine clocks elsewhere in their reference frames as well. So we'll take Anastasia to be at rest, and Beowulf will be moving along the x-axis at a speed of beta. So I'll often call Anastasia's frame the at-rest frame, and this the moving frame. And that's just a convention. We could equally well view Beowulf as being at rest and Anastasia as moving. But it's convenient to um, sort of always have beta be positive. And so we'll take Anastasia at rest, Beowulf moving in the positive beta direction. And we'll assume that they both read time equals zero when their origin clocks pass each other. So what we'll do is build up a two-observer space-time diagram. And we'll start in this video by thinking a number of different ways about what the time axis for each of them would look like on a space-time diagram. So here's the situation. Anastasia is at rest, and she's got a clock at her origin. And that clock is stationary. So the world line for this clock would just be straight up. And that's what the um, time axis is in a space-time diagram. We can think of it as the world line for the clock that is just sitting there at the origin. Beowulf is moving along left to right. And they, the clocks coincide right at t equals zero, and then this clock keeps moving. Right, so this is, this is the picture. Um, and for the sake of concreteness, let's say that the speed of Beowulf and his clock is 2 over 5 in special relativity units, 0.4. Okay, so what is the um, time axis for Beowulf? How would we think about drawing that? given that Beowulf is moving with a speed like this. All right, so just like in Anna's frame, her clock at her origin is her time axis. In Beowulf's frame, Beowulf's clock at his origin is going to be the time axis. And since Beowulf is moving to the right at two-fifths, we're interested in thinking about um, the world line of this clock, because that that will be the t prime axis. So let me let me draw that on and just say a little bit more about that. So the clock is moving at two five, two over five. So that means it goes two units to the right, three, two x units, and in five spatial units. So this. is um, Beowulf's T prime axis, and that's just the world line of the clock that he's carrying with him at his origin. Okay, so now we need to think about how do we calibrate this axis. So um, I will do this similar to how we did the um, example for space. So let's say that um, Beowulf and his clock, it's zero, his clock is at zero when he's at the origin, and he travels a little bit, and then he notices that um, his clock ticks one second later. So I'm going to I'm going to draw that here for reasons I'll explain in a moment. So this is going to be t prime equals 1. So um, Anastasia is just hanging out and sees this clock go by, and it's 0 here, and a little while later it's at 1. So the, the clicking of 1 second, that's the event here on this space-time diagram. And Anastasia is wondering, okay, well, what is, where is this to me? What does this time look like? What does this space look like? All right, so, because the green um, event 
um, has a delta x and a, a delta t for Anna. She's wondering what that might be. All right, so how would she think about that? Well, so this interval here, which is one second according to Beowulf, that's a space-time interval. There are two events. Beowulf's clock it, it, uh, is at zero, moves a little bit. Beowulf's clock ticks one. This is a single inertial clock moving at a constant speed present at both events. So um, this has a space-time interval of one. The interval from the origin to this green event is one. So Anna's like, all right. So there's a um, space-time event uh, that, that has a space-time interval of one. Huh. Well, in my reference frame, you know, I know that um, this event, which I guess I'll also draw in green, also has a space-time interval of one. So the picture here is that this is one second, according to Anna. And for her, that's a clock that's at rest. Zero, then it ticks to one. That's a clock that's present at both events. Um, so that's going to measure a space-time interval. Delta x is zero, delta t um, is one. And just as a reminder, right, the space-time interval, the metric equation tells us is this. Okay, so Anna says, all right, so these two points have the same space-time interval. What would they have to do with each other? And then Anna would think back to that same video she watched that it was about circles, but that, that guy also was talking about hyperbola. And remember, the, the, the key point about a hyperbola is that the set of all points in space-time that's an equal um, space-time interval from the origin is a hyperbola. So what that means is, is that the curve connecting these green dots is not a circle, as we saw before, but it's a hyperbola. So let me draw this on here. It's going to look something like this. So this hyperbola, um, delta s is 1. It's 1 squared t squared minus x squared. So that's the formula for this green curve. And then, um, let's see. Oh, so let me draw on here that this is one second according to Beowulf. So notice that Anna is going to read a larger time. Like when, th so th when this second green event occurs, when Beowulf says one second has elapsed, Anna's going to say actually more than one second has elapsed. Right? They're not agreeing on time. Um, and then we could do a similar thing. So um, one second, two seconds. Um, let's do this one in. So this event, Beowulf's clock strikes two seconds. That means that the space-time interval between the origin and this event is two. Anna says, all right, well, in my coordinate system, this I know that um, this event, my two-second mark at my home clock, has a space-time interval of two. And so this and this are connected by this hyperbola. And that would be 2 squared equals t squared minus x squared. So this tells us how to draw the time axis for Beowulf. We don't know about the space axis yet, but we know how to draw the time axis, and we know how to calibrate it. And the calibration is really different than here. So here, when we're in space, 1 meter, one meter. You can see spatial distances on a spatial map directly. Here, this is a space-time diagram. So this is a space-time interval of two, and this is a space-time interval of two. The literal distance on the map is larger, and that's because we're working with this metric that tells us um, how to do geometry on this space. Okay, so just to say it one more time, what we've seen is that in order to calibrate the time axis for Beowulf, we connect 
the one second marks, the two second marks, the three second marks, not with a circle, but with a hyperbola.